Good afternoon. Today, the federal government started demolition on the Return to Nature Funeral Home, where 190 bodies were improperly stored. I'm Kim Christensen. I'm Tom Green. Before that demolition got underway, victims and local officials gathered for a memorial, providing a sense of closure for some of the families and friends. Nine News reporter Ria Jha is live in Penrose as the demolition continues. Ria? Tom and Kim, the EPA have been working nonstop for the past five hours. As you can see, what once was a building this morning is now a pile of rubble. But even earlier than that in the, in the morning, victims, family members and local officials gathered in front of the funeral home for a memorial to honor those victims that were lost. My first time seeing it is so hard. Outside the Return to Nature funeral home in Fremont County. All these family members. Everything about this moment feels surreal. <sighs> what a hard day. Samantha Naranjo came here for her grandmother, one of the 190. I have to be here for her, you know? 190 bodies improperly right, thank disposed. Thank you so much, and I appreciate everyone being here. So. 190 stories. The beginning of the demolition today. On Tuesday, county officials home. gathered with victims. She deserves so much better than that. Acknowledging the emotional weight this building carries. I have, I have to mention Thank you, guys. That. Thank you so much. But I appreciate all of your hard work. Notified in the fall, Samantha oh, learned the ashes she received from Return to Nature were never her grandmother. Yeah, it's small. Inch by inch, tile by tile, the building crumbles. Samantha felt the need to see this. It's not a closure, but I think it's a good step of moving forward and trying to get closure out of this. We have to live with this horror, this terror, this nightmare. In the arms of the only people who understand. This is never going to be okay. They know they'll get through this together. But we are. Yeah, we're standing strong. Samantha hopes this site will turn into a memorial for the families. The Fremont County Coroner also gave an update of 17 bodies left to identify. Reporting live in Penrose, Rhea Ja, 9 News. All right, Rhea, thanks. This is certainly one of the more difficult stories we've had to follow, but uh, we appreciate you keeping us up to date and keeping those families in our minds. Today, day three in the trial of the former Clear Creek County deputy accused of killing Christian Glass. CBI investigator Derek Graham completed his testimony today, and today jurors were also viewing more of the body camera footage from the incident itself. Graham is one of a handful of witnesses that the prosecution plans to call. After lunch, the DA called another person from the CBI, Eric Bryant, and Agent Bryant testified about the crime scene. Today, the jury also heard from a forensic pathologist about the autopsy report. Kristen Glass's mother, Sally, is also expected to testify in the coming days. Of course, we'll be keeping update on the trial at 9news.com. It's pretty breezy out there this afternoon. The winds also helped cool us down today. We didn't get out of the 60s. You could feel the wind and feel the cool overnight as well, Kathy. Did you love the rain last night? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Do you remember it? I know, but the sound... <laughs> yeah, and, no, and it does <laughs> soothe you. Yeah, yeah, it was some really heavy rain for a while after midnight, between midnight and about 8 a.m. for many areas. And now we have blue skies, a beautiful day, and we're kind of in between storm systems today and tomorrow. The rain's so beneficial, we needed it. We've been talking about, you know, potential record highs, high fire danger, gusty damaging winds, much improved travel into the high country as those winter weather advisories have canceled out. DIA coming in with just under a half an inch of rain, Buckley Air Force Base, Lyman, Centennial Lone Tree, just a handful of totals, a quarter to almost a half an inch of rain during the overnight time period. We've got a mild dry day tomorrow, but rain and snow showers are possible Thursday. So certainly an unsettled week for us. But as Kim mentioned, a whole lot cooler with the passage of that front and the storm that crossed the state last night. 65 in Denver, almost 20 degrees cooler for portions of eastern Colorado. We're going to warm right back up again tomorrow. And the wind is still something we're talking about this afternoon. Coming in out of the west and northwest, pretty gusty yet again, especially for areas like Akron, Lyman, Lamar with gusts to 40, 50 miles miles per hour. So no surprise the high wind warning remains in effect for these areas. It'll go through six o'clock tonight, but maybe extended out beyond that. The red flag or fire weather warning in effect from Colorado Springs down to Trinidad tonight. Uh, no surprise with that either. The storm is lifting away from Colorado. There's some residual snow.
snow showers on I-70, but we have a dry night. Winds will really start to let up in the next hour. Calm overnight, a warm day tomorrow. Changes start about 24 hours from now. So again, you've got some wind between now and 5 o'clock to deal with, and then a very pleasant evening. You're going to love the Wednesday forecast. The rest of the week, I don't know. Snow is definitely a part of that outlook. Thanks, Kathy. Right now we are following some big backups on I-70. CDOT put up an eastbound safety closure between Wolcott and Eagle because of a sinkhole on the shoulder on the westbound side near the Eagle exit 147. CDOT says that sinkhole is confined and maintenance teams are working on backfilling the sinkhole with soil. Usually this is the area we think of snow and problems with accidents, but it's a sinkhole. A sinkhole they're dealing with, Tom. Denver City Council took a first step today moving forward with budget cuts proposed by the mayor to pay for migrant services, and the cuts add up to nearly $90 million. City Council members appeared to support the plan today, and the mayor's office needs City Council approval before the cuts can move forward. The cuts will impact every agency in the city, but are designed to not cut critical services to any department. We've heard more from the mayor about what parts of the city the cuts will spare instead of specifically what is being cut. You've talked a lot about what this isn't going to affect. It's not going to affect this. It's not going to affect that. What is it going to affect? Because it's got to affect something. So I, I do think um, it would be uh, inaccurate to say it's not impacting anything. We just tried to, I mean, I keep using the word mitigate. We really try to mitigate some of the direct impacts to direct services. Coming up on Next Tonight, we'll dig deeper into where the $90 million is coming from and which department is going to feel the biggest impact. Now an update on the bridge collapse in Baltimore as the body of a fourth victim was recovered, trapped inside of a construction vehicle. The identity of that victim has not yet been released. Three other construction workers who were on the Francis Scott Key Bridge have been recovered after the collapse last month. The FBI has also opened up a criminal investigation into the cargo ship that hit the bridge causing the collapse. Federal agents have boarded the 985 foot long ship with search warrants. The federal government now outsourcing the investigation of airline complaints to some states, and that includes Colorado. States can't enforce consumer laws covering airlines, but Colorado will investigate complaints and pass them on to the feds if airlines don't cooperate. The so-called Airline Passenger Protection Partnership involving 15 states was announced this morning at DIA. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg spoke about the new plan during a stop in Denver today. Complaints against airlines and ticket agents will now first go through the Colorado Attorney General's office. Issues like flight disruptions, lack of refunds, or lost and delayed by luggage. Secretary Buttigieg also toured infrastructure work connecting the Globeville and Elyria Swansea neighborhoods separated by rail lines at I-70. The feds are kicking in $35 million for the project, building pedestrian bridges and safer crossings. And tonight at 6 on Next, Kyle Clark talks with Secretary Buttigieg about undoing damage done by past infrastructure projects and asks about projects being pursued today, what might similarly be viewed as harmful by future generations. That's coming up tonight on Next with Kyle Clark.